Victor, it's fantastic to see you here at Gulf Western Oil and fantastic to see you return to racing. Tell you what, mate, it's good to be down here. It's, uh, it's a great place, a great facility and a great bunch of guys. And mate, even the guys on the floor down here are just fantastic. The facility is state of the art, isn't it? It blew me away when I walked in here. It blows me away, the part, little part I know about it. And uh, we've been see, we've seen how it works and what they do and stuff. And you know, I've seen uh, quite a few uh, blending plants over the years. And uh, I've never seen one like this. No, it's, uh, it's up there, computerised, all the rest of the gear. and. Now for you coming back to racing, you've had a bit of a break, haven't you? Well, uh, Benny had an accident in 2014, um, took him out of racing, which he's a big part of the team obviously, so we had to uh, pull back a bit, you know, he was in, uh, he's in hospital for a while and he was at home in a hospital bed for a few months and it took him another few months to recover, so we, we had a break and I've got to be honest with you, I've been racing solid for about 38 years at that time and um, I sort of figured that uh, I had a bit of a year off and a, sort of a year off and I thought to myself, well this ain't all that bad, you know, like, not every weekend you've got to jump in. As much as I love racing, it takes a lot out of you, you know. So I uh, decided what I was going to do was just have a little bit more time off. Ben actually went back to racing before I did. I just had another few months off after it. Then we, all, we got already got the car ready, went back. And it was the Winter Nationals 2016. I decided I'd go back, get back in the car, got back in the car. Yeah, a little bit hesitant. Yeah, I'd been out of it for a while and jumped back in the car. First run, 599, straight down the middle, 246 mile an hour. Loved it and the car felt so good. I, I trimmed down a lot, I lost about you know, 60 kilos at that time through the weight loss program I was on and um, it, it felt good getting back in the car, it felt good driving the car and it just felt like I was back home in the office again. So I'm from the Gulf Western deal come along you know and it sort of surprised us a bit you know, how keen everyone was and everything but right, you know, they might be keen but we're keener I can tell you. We've actually got a new car coming from Murray Anderson so uh, I've always had a right hand drive car with what they call a swing arm rear end. Very uh, stable car, probably not as quick as a four-link car, and left-hand drive, with the size that I was, right-hand drive was never a great thing. You should have been on the left the way to anti-rotation anti, the anti -rotation of the engine. So I um, am now getting, uh, Ben's convinced me to have a left-hand drive car with a four-link rear end, so it's a whole new era, not only in the sponsorship area and the, and the people we're going to be knocking around with, but also in the, in the state of the art and the, and the culture of the car. So. It's an all new assault. We've got an iconic Australian race team and an iconic Australian oil company. I can't think of a better partnership. Tell us about the Top Door Slammer. Tell us about the car. Top Door Slammers are class. I mean, the first thing everyone wants to know is why do you call them door slammers? Well, they're the only class in the rule book that states you must have an opening and closing door on each side of the car. Like funny cars don't have them, dragsters don't have them, alters don't have them, bikes obviously don't have them, but door slammers have them. So there's the supercharged door slammers and there's pro stocks which are non-supercharged and now lately there's been some turbocharged door slammers come on the scene which are pretty damn fast. But uh, we've still got the wood on them so far but maybe not for long. So years ago back in the 80s we had cars that were uh, you know pretty much home built cars. Um, super, you end up putting superchargers on them. There was actually a guy over in, in uh, Brisbane called David Baxter. He was the first guy to ever put a Hemi motor. A motor that the Hemi engines were always pretty much base stated to be for funny cars and dragsters. Okay, Dave ba and I'd always wanted to put one in a sedan. Dave Baxter beat me to it. Put in an XD Falcon. Went out there and it was absolute bullet. So next minute, um, I've got one in. John Zapier in Perth got one in. Nowadays. Everybody's got one in. There is no door slammers running Chevy engines still, so it was obviously just a, a bit of a hump, a bit of a culture thing, I think, more than anything, why the Hemis weren't actually in the cars. So, so we get the Hemis in the cars. Cars are starting to go really fast now, you know, really fast. So people have to start developing suspension technology and stuff that was, you know, basically been around pro stock for a lot of years, but never really been in the blowing door slam, the supercharged door slam and stuff. So the bracket then devolved and that's where we are today. We got, you know, 30 cars in the country, guys running 560s, 570s, 250, 260 mile an hour, you know, 420 K and it's just turned into a crazy competitive class. But the cars themselves there, the motors have got just under 4,000 horsepower and, and the engines in these cars, because we pump so much air into the motor, the air, the, the air and the quality of the air and how much oxygen is, there is per cubic meter of air is very, very important. So uh, the, the, the horsepower can change. You're at a, at a high track, a high altitude, so the air is thin, so therefore the engine's got less ability to make horsepower. So, but when you get on, say, the Winter Nationals, when you're at below sea level and the air is full of uh, oxygen, right, because it's, it's, you know, there's a high there or something like that, uh, the cars will go. So the horsepower varies, say, between around about 3,600, around about 4,000. I think on a really good day when the air drops what we call below zero, so it's more than 100% saturated with oxygen, um, you can then have, uh, you know, the cars might make 4,000 plus a little bit, but um, 
They're, they've always been manual cars, like they've got manual transmissions in them, but they've always had a clutch in front of that transmission, so there's been a clutch between the engine and the transmission. And in that, uh, but that's recently changing, it's converting over to torque converters. And torque converter technology, once upon a time, if someone says, you'll have a torque converter in your 3,000 horsepower door slammer one day, would have laughed them out of the place, right? They've now got them in 5,000 horsepower turbocharged door slammers in extreme classes in the US. So other than that, not much has changed. Tire technology's moved forward. What's taken us from 2,000 horsepower to 4,000 horsepower is the technology in the magneto, so we can spark a much denser mixture inside the cylinder and the superchargers have got better and better and better. So they're not only pumping more air, they're drawing less horsepower out of the motor, um, therefore they're making a lot more power and really getting it free because that the design of the superchargers come better. So um, that's where the door slammer stuff is. They're still tough and they're one of the favorite classes. They're not easy to drive, but on a good run, they're very, very smooth. On a good run, anyone could pretty much drive one. They're, they're very, very nice on a good run. As long as they pull up and stop, you get the shoots out, hit all your shift points right and leave properly. The cars can be nice and smooth. And when you're in the car and you go down the racetrack, the fast runs are the smooth runs. And if it's all over the place and hopping and jumping, you're pretty much not gonna run a big number. So 2017, a big year for Team Bray Racing and Gulf Western Oil. Tell us about the cars you've got. You've got quite a few. We've got the two door slammers, Ben's door slammer, he's a 79 Corvette, my 57 Chev. I've got my 57 Chev burnout car. I've also got, Ben's got a 1963 Corvette burnout car. And Ben's all got, got his lovely brand new looking Toyota Solara, which is gonna run in Pro Extreme shortly. So five Gulf Western, high powered, powerful, fun loving, arse hauling cars. And we're looking forward to um, see what we can do with them in 2017 and beyond, so looking forward to it.